first uh, Sunday yeah. in June. Uh, it's hard to believe already, amen. Uh, these uh, summer days probably go by fast, especially for the young people. And they'll have to be back in school pretty soon. Uh, but good to be here in the little town. So the halls are out in California uh, doing some visiting of uh, Tamra's family. So de definitely covet your prayers there for them till they get back. Uh, Miss uh, Diana thanks you for your prayers as well. And uh, she's a little bit uh, not going to come back as soon till she can make sure she's fully recovered from the infection that she had. So definitely pray for uh, Diana Smith. And uh, she did get discharged, but she's recovering back home, and uh, then Andrea is in Phoenix as well, so we definitely want to make sure that we uh, continue uh, praying for her and her sister and her well-being. Amen. Well, we've got a new hymn of the month. It's going to be The Lord is Good. And it's going to be our motto for the um, the summer months. Uh, tell the Lord about the, the goodness that he has there. Amen. Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. We may be on vacation. We may be Amen. visiting family and yeah. friends. Tell it wherever you go. The Lord is good. Tell it that others may know. Yeah. Tell of his blessings. Amen. Uh, tell of his love. Tell how he's coming from heaven above. The Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. So welcome out those of you online. Join in with the singing. And uh, you as well. And you, uh, feel free to take your masks off. We are seeing a lot of relaxation with the, with the mask wearing. So praise God for that. That's a blessing. Uh, so definitely feel free to do that in your area. So but do as you go back and forth to the restrooms and things like that. Do mask up. All right. The Lord is good. Ready? If you could give us an intro.
mentioned that a couple of weeks ago, and it was very grueling for her. Did you survive, Tony? Yes. Barely? Barely. 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 Amen. She's here. Amen. So congratulations to her. She's got a job as well. Uh, so that's always encouraging. So uh, we congratulate her. What a blessing. What an accomplishment that is. Amen. Uh, the days of praise are out as well. So make sure you get one of those. And uh, they go through August. And so we're looking forward to seeing what God's going to do there. And uh, again, we're still praying as uh, they lift more restrictions. Seeing that we're, what we're going to do here as a church. Uh, right now, we're continuing in this month with the 1045 uh, service, looking at getting something on Wednesdays going uh, soon in the future and possibly moving our Sunday school time to the Wednesday time frame. But we're still praying about those things, so you continue to pray with us, and we're going to trust God to work uh, in our midst and in our lives. I uh, do have one special prayer request for the week. Brother Fred has uh, surgery on Friday. Uh, he's got a hernia surgery that he's going to have done. And uh, so pray for him that there be no infections, uh, any lingering uh, things that happen afterward that can only happen when you go in for any kind of surgical procedure. So he's coming your prayers uh, coming up for this Friday uh, for that. And the halls will be traveling back, I believe it is Friday, Saturday. Yeah, Friday or Saturday from California. They went up to see Tamara's mom and Tamara's dad there in California. Uh, so definitely pray for them on their return trip. Amen. Uh, my sister flew in yesterday, so uh, to Phoenix. We'll be picking her up from Phoenix tomorrow, so we'll spend some time with her this week. And we got to run around take her right back up on Saturday. She had a short trip, had a COVID ticket that she had to use or lose. So she said, I'm going to come out there, see a friend in Phoenix, come down to see my brother. Amen. That's my baby sister, seven years younger than I am whom I gave grief to all my life, and she still wants to come see me, so praise God for that, amen. All right, I'm going to sing another song here, Worship the King, 65, 65, oh, Worship the King. Now, before we sing the first stanza, notice the words up here, oh, Worship the King, all oh, glorious above. And gratefully sing his wonderful love, our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. Amen. That, that's a mouthful of words there, amen. But they're all applicable to Almighty God. Amen. Worship the King, G. Psalm 145, going to pick up with the Lord is good 
and uh, the Lord is gracious today, amen, dealing with Psalm 145. So you go ahead and turn your Bibles there, Mrs. Dawson is going to come up and sing for us Psalm 145.
understand that. Uh, but if you can stand, let's stand turning in our Bibles to Psalm 1 of 45. Going to pick up where we left off last week, uh, endeavoring to cover four different the Lord is phrases here. So we're going to read again Psalm 145, uh, 8 and 9, and then 17 and 18. 8 and 9 and 17 and 18. Amen. Everybody there say amen. amen. All right. And so let's read 8 and 9 first. Then we'll drop down to 17 and 18. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Father, bless now the next moments that we have in your word. Lord, instruct us once again. Help us to see what David is praising you about, what he's talking about. Lord, help us to grab a hold of these same praises and of these same uh, principles applied to our own lives as well. Lord, we know that you're gracious. We know that you're good. We know that you're righteous. And we know that you're not. Lord, we may not always act like it, but we do know that it is true. Bless now this morning, Lord, there's someone without Christ Jesus this morning. Help them to acknowledge that the Lord is nigh to all that call upon him. And so, Lord, they may understand they need to call in truth and the truth of the cross of Christ. We thank you so much for loving us, Lord. Bless now in the message. And, Lord, help us to listen on purpose. Help our viewers online to on purpose make a, a full attempt to not get distracted by things in the home would be readily available to hear and to apply these truths to their hearts. And the same for us in the auditorium. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You know, you see it. Well, you see on my left over here, the Lord is nigh there. And if you see the Lord is righteous, but we also cover the Lord is gracious and the Lord is good is up top, which we did cover that. So we won't spend much time on that, but we will spend a little bit of time on that. Notice I brought out last week at the top of this song, it says David's Psalm of Praise. And we mentioned how most of the Psalms say the Psalm of David. This one says David's Psalm of Praise. And I challenge you and said, if you had to have a Psalm of Praise, what would be in it? Amen. The interesting, and David lists four of the Lord is phrases here. And ironically, many of the Lord is and the Lord is my phrases, guess who most of them come from? David. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Uh, he said, the Lord is my high tower. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my strength. And so many of them, ironically, come from David. And just think about it just for a moment. David's heart was that, that of a shepherd. And so he's writing from a shepherd's perspective of all the things that the shepherd was to the sheep and what God is to him as the sheep. Go back with me a little bit. Moses wrote about the beginnings. Paul wrote about the New Testament instructions. Peter wrote about trials. James wrote about pretty much put up or shut up, amen? <laughs> and, and on and on we can go about different people that wrote you, wrote about false prophets. If God were going to use you to write something to in, put it into the Bible, what would he use based upon your personality? Of course, Peter had many trials, and so he wrote about trials. Yeah. Moses experienced the beginning, so he wrote about the beginnings. You know, I was thinking about it, and I thought, man, what would God have here right about? Probably just persevere, keep going, because I'm like a great white shark. I just keep going. <laughs> uh, sometimes my own demise. But what would God use based upon your personality? What would he pin down in Scripture? Uh, yeah, I have a good indication that probably God would use Pastor White to write about compassion. He's one of the most compassionate men I know. Uh, he, he understands. He's that compassionate man. Uh, this is why she's that organizer. She's that administrator. He probably had her writing about the organization of things and how things are, need to be in order. Uh, my wife really, really feels she's it. She has a lot of empathy and sympathy for people. She knows how a person is feeling. So I think God would use her that way. Joshua, how would God use you? 
probably tear down the walls at Jericho like he did in the Bible. Amen. Uh, but think about it. God has uh, uh, each one of the men and uh, that, that were responsible for writing, uh, he used their personality. What was special about them? David here had many of the Lord is and the Lord is my designations. And so we looked at this psalm here, and uh, it, it did say a psalm of praise. David spent a lot of time praising the Lord. And we began looking at the background last week, and, and we said the, the delight of the psalmist was found in verses 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2, David said that he would be forever praising and that he would start every day praising. Notice verse number 1 for uh, forever praising. He says, I would extol thee, my God, O King, and I would bless thy name. How long? Forever and ever. He said, I'll be forever praising. But then verse 2, he said, I will start every day praising. Every day will I bless thee and will praise thy name forever and ever. He said, I'm going to be doing it forever, so I might as well start every day. Amen. And then we said, uh, notice down here why he leads up to the Lord is gracious. And we talked about the deeds of the Savior in verse number 3. Most of it says, great is the Lord and great to be praised. And his greatness is what? Unsearchable. So David said, you know what I'm writing about? God is so significant because he's unsearchable. He does some things that I don't even know what he does. And I mentioned this. How many times has God stepped in for you and you never knew he stepped in for you? He delivered you and you never knew he delivered you. We just take it for granted. Oh, boy, this didn't happen. Oh, boy, that did Oh, look, every time you get to your destination, Satan says, well, guess what? God stepped in for you. Uh, yeah, I, I was on, uh, doing some exercise with them. I was walking, uh, and I was riding a bike. And uh, as I was coming up to the corner, I was looking right at the guy, and he had a trailer. And he stopped, and I, he did not even see me. And as I went across the street, he came right towards me. And I had to swerve. I was like, hello, hello, hello. I'm not at his bumper. Ho! Oh! And guess what? He hit the brakes. That's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. Because he obviously didn't see me. And I don't know how he didn't see me. But he didn't. And he came right up. And I, I'm looking right at his face, going like this, at his bumper. I'm like, you, 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 don't run me over. You know, God steps in for us like that all the time. And he, he delivers us in ways that we really don't even know about. Amen. And so David said his ways are, his deeds are unsearchable. And then we looked at the declarations of the sons there in verse number four. And he says that one generation shall what? Praise thy works to another and do what? Declare thy mighty acts. The declarations of the sons. He said we need to pass it down so that others can know how good God is. Then we saw down in verses five through seven, uh, the declarations of the saints. He said, David said, I will speak in verse number five. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty. Then he said in verse number six, and men shall speak. Notice what he says, and men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts. And then he said, these mights and these acts, he said, they're going to speak for themselves. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. And then we came up to the basis of what David is talking about in that background, and that is that the Lord is gracious. The Lord is gracious. And we looked at a description of, uh, of the sovereign, a description of the sovereign. The first thing is the Lord is gracious. And we say gracious is this, showing divine courtesy, being kind towards or pleasant towards someone. Has God been gracious to us this week? Amen. He has. Take a deep breath. You know that says God's grace? He didn't have to give that. He doesn't. It's his graciousness. Pastor, this is why he went up to Phoenix and came back. You know what that is? God's graciousness. He was kind towards them. Uh, Brother Hall, they had uh, their tarp was coming off the vehicle. They had to pull over and get it tied back down. You know what that is? God's graciousness. Uh, when that uh, man or that, that truck didn't hit me the other day, guess what that was? God's graciousness. Over and over again, we can talk about God's graciousness. And so the Lord is gracious. And we looked at uh, Jacob last week when he was on the run from Esau after stealing the birthright in the wilderness. What did, Jay, what did God do? God showed up to a man that just stole the birthright, yeah. who had de de deceived uh, his father, and God blessed him. And I said this, oftentimes God is gracious to us because he knows what we are going to do in the future. He knew what Jacob was going to do in the future, even though he was a heel catcher or trickster. 
He knew that he was going to bless the nations based upon that man, and he's going to fulfill Abraham's promise through him that came down through Isaac and then through Jacob. He knew that. So even though he stole the birthright, even though he lied to his father, God said, you know what? I'm going to bless you, and all the things I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I'm going to give to you. He said, preacher, but he was a thief. He deceived. May I ask what you have done and God still blesses you? Amen. Amen. I, I'm amazed at what God does in my life based upon who I am and what I've done. I'm amazed that he still is gracious towards me. And so we looked at that, that God's graciousness was shown in Jacob's life when he's on the run from Esau. And God blessed him. And God often does that because he knows what you're going to do. By the way, sometimes we can look at our children and we say, well, I'm not going to bless you. I'm going to withhold from you. But sometimes God knows exactly what well, not somebody. God always knows what our children are going to do despite what you think or what you say. And so God could be allowing children to go in a certain direction or your coworkers or your bosses or your mothers or your father's going a certain direction because he knows what he's going to do. Did he not intentionally take Egypt or take um, Joseph into Egypt? Yes. Did he not intentionally take the rest of the family into Egypt? Yes. But preacher, that was 450 years of bondage. God knows what he's doing. And when the time was right, guess what he did? He brought them out. And he showed Pharaoh who really is God. Amen. Amen. Uh, so often we don't understand God's graciousness when he still is gracious. Then let's get to this next one. The Lord is gracious, but the Lord also is full of compassion. That same verse. Notice this. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Not half empty, but what? Full of compassion. And what does compassion mean? It means someone that's loaded with mercy. By the way, uh, I've got an example. An example is this. God's compassion or his mercy that he was full of was shown to King Saul when he continued to hunt down David to destroy him. Could God have killed or judged Saul right away? Yeah, he could. But you know what God was with King Saul? He was full of compassion. Full of compassion. He, he did not immediately destroy him, but in the same way, God's compassion and mercy was shown to David when he sinned with Bathsheba. Could he not have killed David right away? Yeah, he could have. Uh, could he have killed Bathsheba as well? Sure could have. Yeah. Sure could have. So God's compassion, as he's full of compassion, was shown uh, to King Saul the same way it was shown to King David. But let me give you something to ponder. And this is indicative of how you and I think. While Saul was hunting David to kill him, David was probably thinking along these lines. Lord, how long before you get him? You said I was going to be the king, but the king is trying to kill me. Mm -hmm. Now, if he kills me, I can't be king. That's right. So, Lord, how are you going to chase me? <laughs> did not he write several songs about that very incident? Yep. Yes, he did that. So, while Saul's hunting David, David was probably thinking, How long before you get him, Lord? And God gave Saul time to repent. Yep. What is God full of compassion? But now let's take the coin and flip it over. When David sinned with Bathsheba, oh, yeah. I'm sure the grandfather, Ahithophel, y'all remember Ahithophel? Oh, yeah. Was thinking like David might have thought about King Saul. How long before you get him, Lord? He had Uriah killed. Mm -hmm. He went into my daughter, Bathsheba, and committed adultery. How long, Lord, before you do something and judge him? Hmm. She was on that foot now, huh? Yeah. God gave David time to repent. Right. What is God down here? The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Yeah. When David sinned with that sheep, I'm sure his full of thinking, how long before you get it, Lord? God gave David time to repent, just like he gave King Saul time to repent. Why? Because he's full of compassion. Psalm 111 and verse 4 says, He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of, of uh, compassion. How I many of y'all love having God's compassion on your heart? Amen. 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 I'm, I'm so glad that he is full of uh, compassion. I'm so glad that he is gracious towards me. But on the other hand, mm -hmm. the 
about when he's gracious and full of compassion on somebody that's done me wrong. We don't, we don't like that, do we? Well, let's just be honest, we don't. We want the compassion. We want God to be full of compassion when it comes to us. We want the graciousness. But, oh, Lord, they don't deserve the graciousness. Get them. Wait a minute. That's a double standard. We're trying to put God in a box. We're trying to make God what he is not. If he's full of compassion, he's got to be full of compassion with who? Everybody. The King Saul's and the King Ahab. I'm reading about King Ahab now. I'm thinking, God, you gave this man time after time after time. That we could Jezebel put him up to this and that and the other, and you still let him off the hook. How could you let somebody like that off the hook? And you know what kind of voice came back? The same way I let you off the hook. I'm like, ooh. Don't like it when it's applied to me. <laughs> but oh, yeah, he deserves it. Jezebel, that wicked woman, she deserves it. I don't. <laughs> that, is, that, is, is that the way we think? Let's be honest. When God is gracious to someone or full of compassion to someone, we don't like it if they wronged us, and so they need to get it, Lord. And David continues, not only is the Lord gracious and full of compassion, but the Lord is slow to anger in verse 8, meaning he's patient or long-suffering with us. We mentioned this before. Anger is demonstrating the rapid breathing in wrath or rage. You ever notice how when you get mad, your heart rate shoots up? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, Pastor. <laughs> yep, right. And your blood starts boiling. Oh, and you get hot. Oh, yeah. You say, man, if I could just get down. Everything about you just seems to elevate. Your blood pressure, <laughs> your temperature, your language. Anger is demonstrating the rapid breathing in wrath or rage when the heart rate and the breathing rate increases. It's the intense emotional state when dealing with a, notice this, non-cooperative response to a perceived provocation, hurt, or threat. In other words, when somebody does something against us and they don't want to listen to reason, we get angry. In other words, when we sin against God and he warns us to stop and we don't, he is slow to anger. Amen. That is the way it should be with our children. We should be slow to anger. We yeah. should instruct them. If they don't get it right, then we correct them. If they don't get it right, we admonish them. If they don't get it right, then we discipline them. What happens? We are slow to anger. God is slow to anger. There's a process. He doesn't just lop off your head when you do something. Yeah. And praise God, he doesn't. There'd be a lot of locked off head Christians around here. Yeah. What happened to you? My man, thank God, man. He was quick to anger and walked my head off. No, I'm just, you know, using that as an illustration. Y'all yeah. <laughs> don't get the name here, man. Uh, so in other words, when we sin against God and he warns us to stop and we know he's slow to anger, that's what he did to King Saul and that's what he did to David. He was slow to anger. Again, think of Saul and David. I'm sure Saul was grateful God was slow to anger with him. Amen. He persisted after David. He persisted after David. He stopped. He'd go back. He stopped. He'd go back. And I'm sure Saul was grateful that God was slow to anger with him. However, I don't think David was too happy with God's slowness to anger. Amen. How many of y'all think he was happy with that? He had to run. He had to go to Philistines. He had to act like a madman. He had to have dribble coming out his, his chin. Uh, he had to go over here and got his wives taken, got all the men's wives taken. All his men were against him. He had to encourage himself in the Lord. I'm sure he's like, Lord, I'm tired of running from Saul. Stop being slow to anger and get this man. He's on my trail. You said I'd be king. Get him. I don't think David was too happy with God being slow to anger. But let's turn the shoe on the other foot. He sinned with that shoe. And guess what God was with him? Slow to anger. And let's bring Ahithophel back in here again. I don't think Ahithophel was too happy with God being slow to anger with David. Again, when he threw up in God's face, he killed Uriah, my son-in-law. Mm -hmm. He committed adultery with my daughter. The baby died. And God, by the law, he should die. But I bet he said this, don't kill my daughter. Amen. 
What happened? Slow to anger. So Saul was grateful God was slow to anger, but I believe that David was also grateful when God was slow to anger with him. But uh, the other parties involved were not, and we have to be honest, we are happy God is slow to anger with us, but we're not thrilled when he is slow to anger with those that have sinned against us. Let's just be honest, we're not. We're not happy. We want God to get him. Get him now. Get him yesterday. Get him yesterday. Spank him, spank him good. Don't stop spanking him until they get right. Don't let him off the hook. You know, that, that's just human nature. That, that's how we are. But David is writing, he said, the Lord is gracious, the Lord is full of compassion, the Lord is full of anger. Notice this, and of great mercy. Of great mercy. The Lord is of great mercy. Great meaning abundant or exceeding. Mercy means kindness or favor. I think all of us would say, praise God, he is of great mercy. Mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. Think about it. If you got everything you deserved last week from God's judgment. Would you even be here today? Probably not, Pastor. If God did to you what the law said should have been done to you, would we even be here? Probably not. Probably Aren't you not. glad God is a great mercy? Yeah. David's writing this psalm of praise, or, and he said, this is my psalm of praise. I'm glad that he is gracious. I'm glad that he's full of compassion. I'm glad that he's full of anger. I'm glad that he's great mercy because I'd be in trouble. If I was writing it down, I'd say the same thing. I'd be in trouble. You know, I, my, my dad, it took a whole lot to get my dad mad. I mean, you had to really just do something just astronomical. But my mom, boy, she'd pop you in a heartbeat. She, she, had, she was not slow to anger. Now, she is slow to anger in her latter years. But in those young whippersnapper days, you know, she was married at 17, had my sister at seven, at 18, wow. uh, and uh, my other sister at 19. Wow. And uh, by the time I came along, she was 21. Wow. She had a lot of energy in this arm. Oh, yeah. It worked good. <laughs> I mean, it worked good. <laughs> and if she didn't have something to do this with, she'd pick the nearest thing up. <laughs> what am I saying? She was quick yep. to anger. Yep, good. And if you have a son like me, you see why. <laughs> My dad, he would just be placid, 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 placid. But when he ran out of that placidness, it was Mount Vesuvius. It was Pompeii. It was Katrina. It was natural disasters. Amen. There would be parts of you here, there, and everywhere. And that's when mom's compassion would come and she put the pieces back together. Make your dad mad no more, boy. See, you know, you pick your foot up over there, you know. Get your fingers <laughs> more there. Get your eyeballs more there and put them back in there. Put some hair back on that head, amen. See, I thought I had hair when I was a kid. I had no when I was a kid. No, I'm just joking, amen. <laughs> but what am I saying? He says he's of great mercy that he didn't give what we deserve. And again, Saul and King David here is one person or two persons we should consider because I'm sure Saul was grateful God was of great mercy with him. But again, I don't think David was happy about that. But when David had the same thing happen, I think David was happy that God was merciful with him, but Ahithophel wasn't. There's always going to be somebody that's not happy about God's grace and God's mercy on your life. They're not going to like it one bit, especially if you've wronged them. Amen. Amen. But you better be glad that God is that way. And he is the same way with everybody. David said, Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. And then he goes right into the second, the Lord is. Amen. And by the way, uh, aren't you glad that God is that way with you? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, sir, Pastor, he is. But confession time, aren't you upset when he's that way with people that have wronged you? <laughs> confess it? I mean, we might as well confess it because we know it's there. Oh, yeah, God, give him another chance. Yeah, let him hurt me again. Yeah, that's what I really want. I said, fool, we know we don't. We say cut him off at the knees. Let him have enough. You get him, Lord. Make him a stump. Do him like you did that idol. Cut him off at the stump. Cut off their arms. Make him that way. Then they will probably leave me alone. <laughs> if we're honest, you may not think that's severe. 
But we don't wish them a bed of uh, happy smelling flowers either. Or get yeah. some garlic and some onions. Amen. Good boy. So the Lord is good. David says, not only is God, the Lord is gracious, the Lord is good to all. Those down there, the Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all of his works. Good there, meaning excellent, pleasant, precious, sweet, beautiful. And he says that God is that way to how many? All. All. And his tender mercies are over how many of his works? All, All his works. I just want to bring up uh, real quick just two notable words that everybody enjoys every day and we take it for granted. Two notable words. Uh, because it says down there, uh, the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all. All of his works. And two works that everybody enjoys. Number one is the work of creation. And the second one is the work of the cross. Amen. The work of creation, the work of cross. Go back in your Bibles to Genesis. The work of creation, all enjoy. Genesis chapter 1. And this is when God is creating. Verse number 3. Because David said, the Lord is good to all, and it's in the verses over all his works. Two notable words. The first one, creation. Notice verse number three. God said, let there be what? Light. How many of y'all praise God for light? Amen. Guess who is the recipient of light? Everybody on the planet is a recipient of God's light. Everybody gets some of this light. He gives it to the just as well as the unjust. He gives it to the saved as well as the unsaved. He gives it to the wicked as well as to the righteous. He gives the sun light to every body. God said, let there be light. Skip down with me to verse number uh, 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. How many of y'all like grass? Yeah. Uh, didn't it nice to go past a, a place that just has fresh mown grass? Yeah. It's got that, that grass smell. It smells good. I, I don't have it in my yard. We've got rocks, amen. But uh, uh, fresh mown grass just smells good, amen. Yeah. Uh, back in the East Coast, I don't like it because mosquitoes hide out in it. They can't sting it. Uh, but notice what he says down there in verse number 11 again. God said, let the earth bring forth grass. Notice this. The herb yielding seed. How I many of y'all like seasonings in your food? Oh, amen. Herb yielding seed. So the herbs that you have, all the spices that you have, guess what? Everybody enjoys those herbs. Herbal teas are great, amen. Yeah. Everybody enjoys those. And by the way, they don't say only the same people can buy these herbs. Yeah. No, everybody yeah. enjoys the herbs. They say, this is just for the same people. Everybody else stay off. No, everybody gets a part of this creation, amen. The herb yielding seed and the fruit tree. I mean, I like fruit, amen. There's yeah. mangoes, there's bananas, there's papayas. There's all sorts of fruit out there. My children don't like apples and bananas. That's because they are uh, weird, amen? Uh, but uh, they get them all the time. So they're like, we don't want that. Give us something to do. Bring some pineapples in the house. They'll tear it up. Strawberries, amen. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, bring a mango. They will tear it up. But the basic run of the mill fruit, nah, we get that all the time, amen? But we love fruit. Everybody gets to enjoy that. It's just not the same people, amen? It's just the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself. Come down to verse number 20. Notice what he says down there. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. How many of y'all like seafood? Oh, amen. Amen. Yeah. Fish, crab legs, all that shrimp. You couldn't be a good Jew and eat that kind of stuff. You know that, right? No catfish, no crabs, no shrimp. Oh, boy. None of the, 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 the bottom feeders could eat that. Amen. Anything with scales you could eat. They didn't have scales. I we eat shark at my house. Oh. And tuna. It's good. Mm -hmm. Not about tuna fish, not about tuna steaks. It's good stuff, amen. Mm -hmm. uh, he says down there, uh, uh, every the moving creature had life and fowl. How do you like chicken? Amen. Anything. You know how I taste it like chicken, amen. And the piles that they, they fly above the earth in the open firmament. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters bring forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl, Cornish hens, turkeys, amen. I mean, y'all like turkey for Thanksgiving, amen. amen. Hey, all those things there, everything there in creation, we can enjoy. And it's not just for us, it's for all, amen. And come down to verse number 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind cattle. I mean, y'all like hamburgers, amen. amen. There you go, your ground beef. 
and the creeping thing and the beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. Who is David saying? He's saying that God made all of his works for everybody to enjoy. There is none barred from it. Praise God. Praise God. Go back down there to Psalms, Psalm 145. David said that the Lord is good to all. Everybody is recipient of this, and his tender mercies are over all his works. One note of the work is work of creation for all to enjoy. But then the work at the cross is for all. All can enjoy the work at the cross. Mm -hmm. By the way, just because everybody doesn't enjoy it doesn't mean they can't. By the way, all the fruit, you can have all of it. All the meat, you have access to all of it. All the seafood, you have access to all of it. Guess what? A lot of people don't enjoy it. That's not to say that it's not there and ready for all. But Jesus said this, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. At the cross, he said, it is finished. The work at the cross was for all to enjoy. Romans 10, 12, and 13 say it this way. For there is no difference between the, notice this, the Jew and the Greek or the those that are under God's protective love and the Gentile, which they thought were not. He says there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over how many? All is rich unto who? All that what? Call upon him. Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Yeah. What am I saying? The work of the cross is for all. The work of creation is for all. He said it's finished. Mm -hmm. uh, forgive them if they don't know what they do. They don't have a clue what they're doing. By the way, people turn their nose up at the cross. They turn their nose up at Christ. They turn their nose up at salvation. But well, guess what? It's still for them. <coughs> it's still for them. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world. Then he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What is David going down here and saying? He's saying, you know what? Let me give you some background as to why I am praising God in this song. Mm -hmm. And then in verses 8 and 9, he says, this is the basis. The Lord is gracious. Full of compassion. I've experienced that. The Lord is full of anger. I've experienced that. The Lord is of great mercy. I've experienced that. But not only have I experienced that, I've seen God do that on other people as well as me. Yep. I didn't necessarily like it. But I know he's fair across the board. Mm -hmm. He said, the Lord is good to all. And his tender mercy is over all his works. He said, you know what? The work of creation is for all. The work of the cross is for all. Those are two noble works that we can enjoy and know that the Lord is good to all Amen. and his tender mercies over all his works. My question to you is how has the Lord been gracious to you this week? And how has the Lord been good to you this week? Maybe for you, you've had to follow his compassion. Mm -hmm. Maybe you had to follow his slowness to anger. Maybe you had to follow his greatness of mercy. God, don't give me what I deserve. Mm -hmm. David did. Maybe you had to follow God's goodness. And you've enjoyed some of the things that God has created, part of his creative work. Maybe some of the things of the cross, like forgiveness of sin. Yeah. At the cross, all of our sins were forgiven. Yes, sir. Now get this. Past sins were covered at the cross. Present sins are covered at the cross. Mm -hmm. And potential future yeah. sins are covered at the cross. They're remembered no more because of the cross. When we get to heaven, we're not going to be judged on our sin. That's already that, that's a done deal. Yes, so we're not going to go to heaven and just say, what sins did you commit, Greg? Yes, that's, that's, that's on, cross, on, on the cross. In Christ, that's done. Amen. When I stand before God, it's going to be, what did you do for me since you got saved? Mm -hmm. Who did you tell? Where did you go? Why did you do your, your good deeds? What was your motive for? Why did you give? Why? Motives and then rewards are received based upon that. Sin is never going to be the issue. Amen. Sin is never going to be the issue. Why? The cross paid it all. Yes, sir, it did. What is that? Graciousness of the Lord, compassion of the Lord, mercy of the Lord, goodness of the Lord. Our sins will never be called into question again because of the cross. Amen. And everybody can enjoy that. Folks, 
let's take advantage of those two words this week and thank God for the cross. And thank God for the creation. Next time you're eating something, thank God for it. Amen. He created all. He made it all. Next time you're thinking about what God has done, you thank him for your salvation. Thank him for the cross. Because that is what it's all about. Folks, David is not done yet. He's got two more. The Lord is that we're going to go through next week. And I'm trusting God to work in my life as well as your life as we think about what the Lord is. Again, verse 8 and 9. Read those with me. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. You know, when it says the Lord is good to all, stick your name in there. The Lord is good to the pastor. The Lord is good to Mrs. Dawson. Why? Because he is good to you. Throw your name in there. And just recount how good God is to you. Amen. Hey, he gave us the cross. He gave us creation. Everything is for us to enjoy. I do trust that you'll reflect upon this this week as you think about what God is doing in your life and how gracious and how good he is to you. I hate to go my eyes are closed on the floor. Father, we thank you so much for your graciousness. Lord, the fact that you're full of compassion. Lord, we thank you that you are slow to anger. And thank you that you're a great mercy. Lord, we may look back and thank you for that, but then when you are that way to others, we may not be so happy. But Lord, remind us that you're that way to us. And so because of your character and your nature, you're going to be that way to others. Lord, remind us how good you are to us in all of your works. But more importantly, the work of creation we get to enjoy on a daily basis. The work of the cross we enjoy on a daily basis. Our salvation is always working in and through us. And thank you, Lord, that we can leave here differently than we came in. Lord, maybe a little bit more appreciative of your slowness of anger, a little bit more appreciative of your compassion, a little bit more appreciative of your graciousness, a little bit more appreciative of your creation, or a little bit more appreciative of the cross of what it means to us. And Lord, help us, as the song said, the Lord is good, tell us wherever you go. Help us to be able to show it to others in what we say, what we think, what we do. Share the love of Jesus with someone else this week. Thank you for what you have been to us, what you have done for us, and how you've watched out for us. Lord, help us to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Help maybe a viewer online who needs to accept Christ as Savior. Lord, you said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Maybe there's someone watching that has never believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and his death and his burial and his resurrection. Lord, you said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that man, woman, boy, or girl just needs to believe that Jesus died for them, was buried for them, and their sins are rose again the third day and accept you as Lord of their life and Savior. Lord, if there's one that has not done that, make it crystal clear to them what they need to do. And have them call upon you for salvation. Bless now in our invitation. Help us to be mindful of what you would have us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our heads are bowed, eyes are closed. We're looking around. That's very good place to hand this invitation. I'm not sure what God would have you do, but whatever it is, we should do it. Maybe like David. Just go right down. The Lord is gracious. Thank you for His grace. The Lord is full of compassion and compassion towards you. Thank you for it. Maybe God's been full of anger with you. You need to thank Him for being full of anger because He didn't judge you right away. Maybe it's a great mercy towards you. He didn't give you what you deserve. Maybe just thank Him for it. Maybe you have thoughts of God's character towards someone else and you weren't happy with that, thank God that he's a consistent God. Because just as consistent as he is with someone else, he's consistent with you. Lord is good. It's all. Just as good as he is to you, he's good to the next person, whether they deserve it or not.
creation is there for them to enjoy. That's the history of The cross is there to enjoy. Just the history of You know, we like to think as Christians we have the market on God that we don't. He's good to all. Why? He created all. He's gracious, full of compassion. God can look down the road and see what he wants to do in your life. Ironically, he can look down the road and see what he wants to do in the life of that person that you think does not deserve his graciousness, does not deserve his compassion, does not deserve him to be slow to anger. And great mercy, God knows we sit with that life as well. By the way, God was slow to anger, but David finally didn't get paid back. Ahithophel finally didn't get paid back. King Saul finally did get paid back. There is no such thing as a successful sinner. God, even though he's gracious, full of compassion, full of anger, and great mercy, he makes sure that what needs to happen happens. What's God done for you this week? What does he want to do for you this upcoming week? I decided to follow Jesus. Don't turn back even when he's compassionate to someone else. Slow the angle someone else. I've decided. Father, thank you so much for your goodness in our lives. Thank you, Lord, as uh, David said, Lord, you're good. Lord, you're gracious. Lord, you're full of compassion. Lord, you're slow to anger. Great mercy. And if you were not, Lord, where would we be? But thank you that you are that way. Lord, as we leave here today, help us to leave with the thoughts of how good you really are and how gracious you really are and how much compassion you really have shown just this week. Uh, Lord, I could have been hit by a, a truck this week, but your grace sustained me. Lord, just slow to anger. I didn't do everything I should have done this week, but you slow to anger with me. Lord, you have great mercy. You didn't give me what you could have given me, so thank you for that. And Lord, help us all to reflect on how good you really are to us. And how much you love us. And Lord, we will never, ever be judged for sin. It's been judged at the cross. And so Lord, help us to leave here rejoicing that we can serve you in spirit and in truth. Lord, dismiss us with your blessings and help us to be differently than we came in, more Christ-like in what we think, say, and do. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Folks, we are six months into the year. Wow. This is the sixth month already. It is so incredibly hard to believe, but we are. Uh, continue to pray for the summer months, safety and what we need to do. All those that will be in and out traveling, pray for them. Continue your stewardship as Pastor White, I'm sure, reminds you of. Amen. And uh, we look forward to relaxing uh, the conditions a little bit more as the, the days and the weeks and the months go by. And getting yeah. back to a sense of normalcy. Yeah. And I don't think there will ever be such a thing as normal. Oh, there will be more normal. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we look forward to that blessing. So Pastor, are you going to come up? Come up.